place is one of those apocalyptic movies that are just impossible to survive. I always think about things in a video game context and it would make a badass game, but as I said, it would be impossible to survive. You can't fart, you can't breathe, you can't snore, and you can't have a cold. You can't jiggle the bed springs just to save your relationship. And realistically, if you're in a quiet room and your heart is beating too fast because one of those things is stalking you, you need to make sure there's enough muff- <laughs> You, 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 you need to shoot him. When the first A Quiet Place movie dropped, I was crazy and obsessed with these monsters, understanding full well that in this world, humans would probably all die out. I'm not even joking. The only thing I feel would have a chance at remotely surviving in this world are small flying birds. And that's only because these death angels can't fly. Imagine if they evolve and adapt though, and they can. Oh my God. And these creatures are jerks too, because they pick and choose what bothers them depending on what day of the week it is. Yo, pick up the <laughs> Their ears are super sensitive, but loud crashing natural water doesn't seem to bother them, okay? In a rural area with all the ambient noises, you'd think it'd be much easier because there's way more wildlife ambience to cover up your natural ambience. Cool, cool. So then I was thinking, what if this happened in the city? And surely enough, that's what the third movie's about, the prequel movie. How feasible would it be to survive in the city with these things? No, seriously. First of all, okay, people in the city would have a hell of a time because everybody would be screaming and running. And there's already total noise pollution in cities. Every car is getting split down the middle. Every person is going to erupt into clouds of blood. The death angels are going to feast so well on these humans and everything in the vicinity. Women, men, babies, everything. Wombs, tits, dick, everything. It's not like they're even killing to eat. We haven't seen these creatures eat, so we don't even know if they do. I have videos about that anyway. You're crying? Because you're scared, bap, shut that mouth and take this alien dipper because you just committed a cardinal sin, which is naturally expressing yourself due to intense fear or discomfort. Are you trying to walk quietly down the dark alley, hoping that you're not gonna set one of these things off, but your sneakers does that weird, stupid, sneaky squeak that everyone finds embarrassing if you're the only ones doing it in a full room of people staring at you, like they never had it happen to them, like you're inconveniencing them for some reason? Good job, you just call one to your location and maybe several. Are you depending on the military to help you? They're getting their cheeks clapped like fish lips on a plastic pancake because none of their weapons work. And by this time, all you can think of is aliens have come down to earth and now these mutant cockroach things are killing everyone indiscriminately for no reason. Naturally, you hide and so do your friends and the group of people that you're with who are your uh, survival associates. You don't even have time to have a relationship or recognize that the person next to you is super attractive past the thought of, if I run faster than them, maybe I'll survive. Like, <laughs> you wanna be empathetic, but after you've seen a whole bunch of people just get their heads lopped off from out of nowhere, and after you've witnessed this now wide anglerfish with four legs and bat limbs that don't look like normal legs or limbs using its appendage to knife clean through steel and concrete, you're not about that empathetic life. <laughs> Things would need to settle down for at least half an hour before you start thinking about anybody else. Like in your heart, you know you wanna help, but let's be honest, which one of you, if you saw a guy screaming out there with the monster running towards him, would jump between him and the monster and tell the monster to stop? Which one of you would be like, wait, 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 hold on, let's talk about, like, no, you, <laughs> or would you stay hiding under the van with a family of nine people all squished up in it and whose liquids are draining through the vehicle down on you. Asking the real ethical questions over here, but that's how we arrive at the conversation of whether or not we would even survive this and if it's possible, and if it is, how would we? Let's just get this out of the way. Most of the population, dead. Most people are naturally going to be screaming and running away from something that is chasing them or killing everyone especially in the city, you know, where people are already inherently afraid of animals bigger than cats and dogs. Most people are not going to be thinking, Gee golly, I wonder if those things are deaf, even though they don't have eyes. Maybe I should stand where I am and be completely quiet while it's running at 60 miles per hour towards my direction. Exactly. Most people would instinctively try to escape in vehicles or anything with wheels, not realizing the noise they're making. So. Let's assume that most people have no idea these creatures hunt by sound. No one is sticking around long enough to even notice that these things don't have eyes. But one thing people will naturally want to do after all the running is gone is hide, especially when they see a huge swath of the human race getting sliced and diced by these things in every direction. You know, we're gonna recognize that these things can climb and jump and run super fast and that there is no way for us to outrun them. Some people are going to jump in the water and quickly realize that these things can't swim. I think these people will be among the first to break the game. If you have a boat or happen to be on the ocean at the time when all of this is happening, 
you're just going to stand on your boat offshore and watch the mayhem, realizing pretty quickly that these creatures, even though they can detect you out there, are not going to go anywhere near you or be able to reach you. Maybe some people with ships or boats will be honking their horns, you know, trying to distract the monsters to help those on land who are running for their lives and getting their jaws dislocated by these creatures. As we've seen in the A Quiet Place 2 movie, when these creatures jump in the water they sink or drown but the water has to be deep enough because we've seen them hiding in the water as well why can't i say water sometimes it's weird anyway We also see the creatures obviously know how to hold their breath when they can feel the ground, but then they seem to freak out when they can't, when they're in the water. Sorry, Ugh, stop. Then again, there's always the harrowing possibility that these creatures are like humans, where some can swim and some can't. What if the ones we saw just never learned, you know? Like what if they're from their equivalent of a city or something? But let's go with the observation that they can't swim because everything that we've seen so far suggests that they can't. And in the Quiet Place 2 movie, one of the characters even said that the National Guard recognized that the creatures can't swim. We got here to Sangre Asia. We were in the city. We were the Earth and Siren. Once they knew they couldn't swim, the National Guard were told to start loading people into boats. Any boat they could find. So as soon as people saw the first one get out safe, everyone just started pushing forward. That's when they started screaming. They had 12 boats lined up on the dock that day. Only two got out. And there were probably a lot of them in the area at the time. You know, odds, the way it works, if most of the monsters are not jumping in the water, if they are, they're dying. That, that means that there's a pretty high probability that they all can't swim. The fact that they don't even realize that the water goes that deep means that possibly on their planet or where they came from, even if it's within the earth, I don't know. They probably never had an encounter with water that was deeper than what they could walk through. And I know, we saw meteors with them coming, so they probably came from space. But who knows? A meteor could have crashed down on the planet and then created a crater in the earth and they came out and got on earth from underground. Who knows? It doesn't matter. That's not the real question here. We're not talking about that. All we know right now is People plus deep water equals safe. Now, what about you? Depending on where you are in the city, you probably don't have access to deep water unless it's a lake or something or a big above ground pool or a pool. Your first order of business is to hide, hide, hide. It's going to be so freaking terrifying when you notice that people are point blank shooting guns at these things and the guns aren't working. It's messed up because in most American cities, civilians are not allowed to have guns to defend themselves. So they're not going to be able to figure that out. But they will figure out very quickly that guns do nothing once they see the cops trying to do it. Like we saw in the second movie, whoever is licensed to have a gun, which are mostly rich people or specific cases like shop owners, they're gonna be trying to help people by coming out with their shotguns and popping off on these things, only to realize that point blank, these things are completely unfazed by a shotgun blast to the face. Like what? After witnessing that enough, if you're alive long enough, you're gonna hide and you're going to stay hidden and not come out if you're smart probably in a building or something with shelter and tables that you can hide under a closet. I would go in a closet or something soundproof. People in studios are probably gonna fare better as well because of all the sound foam, if there's any. People might hide in closets and just pray that it doesn't make noise when you have to open the door. People might even hide under their beds, which would work very well. And people on carpeted areas would fare better because it's much quieter than walking on a bare floor. Some people might even discover they need to take off their shoes and God help you if you're in a house full of wood and the wood creaks. You also probably notice that when there are a lot of people running and making a lot of noise, a horde of these things is drawn to them. Imagine a herd of humans flocking in one direction and naturally you're gonna wanna go off by yourself when you see these things catching up and hacking and slashing everyone like they weigh nothing. Your first thought is probably gonna be, man, those things seem to wanna follow everyone because they're stampeding away and not that it has anything to do with the noise per se. People are going to try every trick in the book, including distractions. Maybe you have a group of people like the one I mentioned before, and the leader of the group throws a cannon in one direction to distract the monsters or draw them out if they're hiding. That's the other thing too, it's going to be so terrifying. Just like in I Am Legend, because these quiet place monsters now have a million places they can hide. They're masters of stealth and parkour. All the buildings and skyscrapers around you are possible hiding spots for these things. And we've seen in the movies that these creatures can hide in plain sight. It's terrifying. It's like they go dormant when they're expecting something to come by or for them to pick up a sound so they can attack. Not only that, but in the concrete jungle, every sound echoes like a symphony in an empty theater. When it's quiet out there, every footstep feels like a thunderclap. You're also gonna realize that if it's raining out and you happen to survive long enough for it to, 
that the rain can sort of mask your noise. People are going to use inclement and bad weather to move across long distances, and cars are going to be a thing of the past. If you can get on a stretch, you can outrun these things with a car, but the noise is going to draw them for miles. You and your group are going to travel lightly, take off your shoes, and get a lot of foot infections and foot fungus because there's going to be broken glass and blood splatters filled with AIDS and other diseases that you're going to step into with your open wounds. Anybody who gets hurt and is limping is going to be left behind. The unfortunate truth is that you're not going to be able to take care or save everyone. You and your group are convinced that you have to go to some spot so that other officials like soldiers can save you, not realizing that the soldiers can't even save themselves. In the midst of survival brainstorming, someone inevitably suggests heading to colder climates because, you know, freezing to death seems like a more appealing option than being torn apart by monsters. You probably have to get used to whispering each other's ears and whispering very quietly. Only the whispering also draws these monsters. So you resort to texting on silent mode, praying your phones don't die before you do. If you turn off the tactile response noises from your typing on your phone, it's pretty silent, but your phones are not going to stay charged forever, and electricity is not always going to be an option. You're going to try and use little signals with your hands and fingers whenever you have a chance, but that's probably going to be a futile attempt at some communication, unless you know sign language, unless you can master it in time for your untimely demise. Now you're going to have this false sense of hope traveling with this group of people, especially when you have a strong leader. You stay in a building for a long time until whatever is going on blows over, until you catch the delightful sound of one of those critters casually tapping and clicking its way to your building. You guys aren't hiding at this moment. You're out in the open inside the building. And then you're like, oh my God, I need to get somewhere to hide because this thing might come inside. It's being a little too interested in this building. And is it possible that it smells us? Most people in your group probably smell like ass right now, so it's possible, especially if you don't know how these monsters behave. You haven't really had much of a chance to sit down and assess the situation, so here you are in this pizza restaurant, and there's probably only six of you, and now the stick figure monster with pencil teeth is about to come in. So of course, we have to account for people in these kinds of situations being completely stupid. So alas, in the chaos of the moment, one of your group members pulls out the classic move from the Book of Dumb Decisions and bolts out the back door, which causes a bunch of noise, which then causes the alien dude to blast through the glass windows from the front because it's so powerful, and it runs right past you guys and snags the escapee faster than you can say idiocy in motion. Meanwhile, now it's inside the building with you guys, and you have to stay incredibly still. And then there were five. And then the woman who's cowering out in the open like a deer in headlights, too scared to move until Mr. Monster decides to use her leg as a welcome mat, crushing it to powdered milk, and then she screams out and her head gets chopped off right in front of you. Her husband next to her starts screaming because, you know, his wife's head decided to take a little vacation without the rest of her body. And just to keep the party going, he gets a one-way ticket through his sternum courtesy of our friendly neighborhood impaling service and he's flung to the other side of the building oh no another one of you gasps almost inaudibly uh oh too loud anyway the creature then starts swinging its very sizable forelimbs widely trying to hit what it thinks make it the sound only to connect with one of the metal tables knocking out the person who gasped and was hiding under it you and the leader of the group are in complete shock and totally silent because now you're used to this gameplay you know just from observation but the thing is now clicking and looking around looking uh seeking wait uh listening Wh whatever but it's seemingly facing your direction but not doing anything but this lets you know immediately holy fish cloaca these things are blind which means that they hunt with sound it makes sense why they react so aggressively. So now you two are probably the only people who know this. Unfortunately for you though, in this situation, the creature would probably just hang around, lie down and fold its legs, waiting for something else to make a sound. But you're in the city and people are still dealing with this just now apocalyptic event that's happening. So it's drawn to whatever noise is out there and crashes through another glass window and takes off. Now with the adrenaline fuel clarity of a caffeine addict at dawn, you and your remaining terrified companion Jot down a quick note in a scrap of paper for any unwitting soul who stumbles upon the red restaurant that these things, woo, they hunt with sound, they're blind. If you're moaning because you're coming out of consciousness or because you're having a wet dream or something, uh you're probably going to be dead. And that's probably what the third person of your group who got knocked out under the table is doing right about now. Now you can crawl over to the person and try to get them to be quiet or you can get as far away from them as possible. And one of two things would probably happen. I wish we had a choice game like this. It would be so freaking awesome. Something like Baldur's Gate, but with like horror elements and a quiet place. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's so much noise going on outside that the unconscious person that's trying to come out of consciousness 
would have time to come to and realize where they are, only to then recognize to their horror that they're still living in this nightmarish hellscape, or stay where you are and watch to see what happens, which is probably that eventually one of these monsters would hear old boy moaning and come over to join his chorus of moans with a sweet melancholy sound of a swift stab to the face. And let's say that you live through all this. Whatever you have in the pizza building is probably in bags or cans in terms of food, and there is no way you're opening these things without making noise. Most food items are in plastic bags, containers, metal cans, or some kind of packaging that would require you to make noise to open it, unless you're moving at a snail's pace and you're opening it in a mall box, which isn't realistic. Even if you were to travel, how are you gonna put these things in your bag without attracting every flesh-eating fiend within a mile radius? It's like trying to tiptoe through a minefield while juggling chainsaws. And city farms aren't exactly a thriving industry last time I checked, unless you're into cultivating weeds sprouting from sidewalk crevices or repurposing abandoned potted plants as your lifeline. And even if you wanna get some topsoil for planting stuff from some nearby store, good luck trying to transport that or cutting it open. Not saying it's impossible, but it's definitely not practical at this moment in the venture. Eventually, you will have to leave the restaurant. Either go into another building because it's not like you can patch it up. Everything you're going to do is going to make noise unless you have a big sheet and then you'll need a special type of tape that doesn't go when you're trying to take stuff off. But even if you're gonna try and take off the tape to put the sheet over the windows, that's still going to make noise. I swear to God, this apocalyptic concept is the ultra hard mode. It's going to be so annoying even walking on the ground for basic mobility. In a city area like this where chaos just happened moments ago, walking on the potentially litter strewn streets of a city is a potential beacon for monsters for miles. You can't even walk through buildings and not even the rooftops because the creatures are probably up there too and they don't need stairs or an elevator to get up there. They can seemingly walk on very smooth surfaces regardless of what it is. Even if you were to take a bike, you have to worry about the bike running over certain things that are gonna make noise and you have to worry about that sound that the bike chain makes anyway, the wheels going over things. And then on to the culinary adventures of the apocalypse. You've got to gather food and make sure you eat stuff that's silent, like soft dough cookies or meat. And how are you even going to cook the meat? God forbid if it's a wintry situation and you need fire to live. As humans recognizing that these creatures hunt via sound, you're going to try certain things at a distance to see how these creatures react because now you and your last remaining group member are at least ahead of the game in that regard to the knowledge that these creatures are blind. So you consider the timeless solution to many problems. Setting things on fire. Maybe you whip up a homemade Molotov cocktail or stumble upon a conveniently placed inferno because you know every good apocalypse involves a city ablaze with chaos and explosions. Realizing that the creatures don't really react to fire as an audible threat would give you some more information. They don't even seem to be bothered by fire in the least. So then your heart will fall straight through your digestive system once you realize that these creatures can even walk straight through the fire and stand up in it and kind of like dance in it without it bothering them. So it's not like you can even think about a weapon to hurt them because guns don't work it doesn't work, I'm sure someone's tried, and fire sure as shit doesn't burn them. At this stage, you're probably not even aware of the water situation, but that's probably going to be your next thing, finding water and getting as far away from here as possible. So you probably make a plan to go to the docks and you and your other friend would probably realize that there are other people with the same idea and providing that you all don't get sliced to bits via snoring at night, you could feasibly make it to the docks where there would be more quiet place monsters waiting because a bunch of people probably had the same idea, hence why there's all the blood on the boats. They didn't have enough time and a lot of the boats are probably destroyed in an act of what could be mistaken for intellectual brilliance or sheer desperation, someone decides to orchestrate a diversion, transforming their smartphone into a makeshift siren. This not only turns the device into an electronic sacrificial lamb, but also beckons every creature in the vicinity. Strategically placed in an urban abyss, such as a gutter or manhole, it becomes a siren song that these beings can't resist and can't easily reach. You and your partner and your new group would probably use that sound to mask all of you getting the boat away from the dock. And thank goodness, you'd probably survive and feel the overwhelming sensation of total relief as these things jump in the water and your ass clenches, but then releases its grip from itself when you realize that the creatures can't swim. Beautiful. I hate to break this to you, but even after all of this, if you live in a city area, more than 85% of you'd probably be dead. 
And out of the survivors, probably only 5% of you would live long enough to even make the connections to get off land. Even if you can fly a helicopter or something, you have to worry about landing it and that draws a lot of noise. Even if you make the connection that you need to use a boat to get away, you might not be able to operate one unless you can still use Google, which you probably will be able to for a little while. Since these creatures can't cross large swaths of water, all you need to do is find an island away from these things if you can get on the boat. And hopefully none of these creatures touch down on that island because we saw them falling out of the sky. <laughs> so if they're already then there, then that sucks. But now you might think that betting on islands as your go-to hideout sounds about as optimistic as trusting a fart after a food poisoning saga. But the odds of one of these things landing on your chosen speck of land are very slim, especially if it's a small island, unless of course the universe decides to rain them down like some twisted apocalyptic confetti and it covers like every surface area of the earth, which we saw that it didn't do. Still, from experience, I can honestly say it would be much easier surviving on an island where lots of food naturally grows and there are a lot of soft fruit around that you can harvest and bite into. There's enough nature sounds, but it sucks because if you're thinking about getting a bunch of meat with pigs and other creatures like goats, they're too loud, too visible, and basically walking, bleeding dinner bells. And the only things that would survive are probably fish or very small birds that are hard to catch and that these monsters can't readily get their claws in. So you're probably gonna go with fruit and fish. The creatures don't seem to be particularly intelligent, but I do think they will adapt. If you start using the same siren or the same noise to draw out the monsters, and then after a while, they continue going to that noise and realize that the noise doesn't mean anything, they're going to eventually ignore it. Now, this could be a good and bad thing. It could be a bad thing because when you need a distraction, those creatures are going to hear that thing and not run in its direction, which is what you want them to do. On the flip side, it could be a good thing because it can be used to mask your noise and hopefully the creature's brains don't tune out the noise as useless and then hone on to whatever noise you're making. Just like I'm sure they tune out fire and water and the sounds of the wind and birds, they would probably tune out the siren. So you would have to be using different noises as distractions. But then again, the sound of water hitting the ground and rain kind of has the same noise and they tune that out, but yet it also is able to mask certain noises. But then again, we've seen that some of them get used to it and can still pick up noises despite that. But anyway, I imagine that people living on the island for a while, you and your friends, would come up with some kind of method to deal with these monsters. Maybe all of you would position yourselves in certain directions and distances, and while one person is screaming and drawing the creature away a few miles away, then you stop screaming and hide while the other person is drawing the creature away. And then you start screaming and distracting the creature trying to pull it as the other person hides. And then all of you would kind of do the same thing, causing the creature to be confused. But that's if there's only one. Should a smattering of creatures find themselves marooned on the island, your predicament would resolve itself with laughable ease though. Given the widely acknowledged fact now that these creatures possess a rather embarrassing inability to navigate deep waters, the solution borders on the absurdly simple, which you and your friends would have already figured out. All you would need to do is go out into deep water and make a bunch of noise and draw the creatures into it. Imagine if everybody in the city did that. The movie would end so quickly. <laughs> Watch them retcon that. Watch them be like, we were wrong, we fought. I wonder what inevitable narrative gymnastics would be employed to navigate around that glaring plot convenience. Cause it is glaring. It's like, <laughs> water. <laughs> sorry. Because aside from using a frequency that hurts their ears, which somebody would probably figure out sooner or later, we already know that the easiest way to kill them is to drown them. You know, no, no effort involved except you swimming. You don't even have to swim very far. They sink immediately. <laughs> So most people just go into boats and then call out the creatures and then watch waves of them just stupidly jump into the ocean like idiots and drown themselves. Problem solved. That's how you survive. Now for the few creatures that happen to make it out of that situation and manage to climb out of the water over their friends and recognize that the water is a problem, they would probably stare clear of the water once they hear it, which would be another advantage still, because whether or not these creatures jump in the water, if water is a barrier between you and the creature and it still can't swim, you win anyway. We don't know how long these creatures live, but if they do require food and they are completely landlocked, they eventually will die out. If not, people just know not to go there unless they wanna study these creatures and capture one to put it in a controlled environment, preferably not where everybody's living on an island. If we would live long enough to recognize the frequency that make their heads explode, then we would win the war, because then we have that and the water. The water. Then all we have to worry about is where the hell they came from, and hopefully their arrival was merely an unfortunate fluke 
rather than the result of some malevolent entity sinister shipping error. And notice, that's how you survive in the city. And I never said to stay in the city because that's just a death sentence. See, at least the people in A Quiet Place 2, the prequel, well, sort of half the prequel, they were smart. There's just too much reverberation, too little opportunity for survival, unless you can move, phone quiet, and have the ability to grow food in a soundproofed place. But always be looking over your shoulder because in the city, these things have endless places to hide. Being in a wide open area or having trees to help mask your sound, like on an island, would be a much better way to go. Maybe Hawaiians can finally have their home back. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.